But the rebellious, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Current famine in Somalia is just one of the latest signs that correspond to and verify what we have labored to preach as well as to proclaim um, previously. And we're not trying to take any, you know, there's, there's no amount of credit, you understand, the real, the real blame. For this must be laid at the at the footsteps of the Islamo fascists, um, the African and Somalians who have been deceived, you understand, into being rebellious against the King of Kings and His Christ. And once again, what is interesting is when we go to Psalms, Psalms chapter 68, and we mentioned this before because this Psalm has very important words to mention concerning Ethiopia and prophecy. And when we say Ethiopia, we're talking about the Horn of Africa and the and the countries, the countries of the Horn of Africa. They say that this particular present famine, it has not been this severe in about two decades or literally 19 years. Well, um, Mohammedans and Muslims uh, who, who 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 know about Islam should know that number 19 according to Islamic mathematics and the Abjad and, and other kind of Islamic sciences, um, the number 19 is very significant. The number 19 is extremely significant. So it has not been this bad in about 19 years. But here in Psalm 68, verse um, 6, concerning the Horn of Africa region, it says that God, or Ha Elohim, or Elohim, He setteth the solitary in families, He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. And the last part after the colon says, But the rebellious, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. The rebellious dwell in a dry land. And what is so interesting and even somewhat uh, amazing to us on a certain level. Very, very interesting is that in our um, current um, Torah portion readings of our Sabbatical studies and the Rastafari Sabbatical studies and the Sabbatical scrolls, that we're, 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 we're witnessing the Israelites now getting ready to come out of the wilderness as we are, as Beta Israel are beginning to come out of this wilderness of North America and the Caribbean and to re-enter and reclaim their land. But first, there has to be a, a, a change. The Almighty is also working to create a place for His people. So I'm saying that this sign of the Somalian famine should not discourage us because there's a lot of false, false prophets and, and, and pop uh, you know, pop culture rosters out there and other weak hearts and dissemblers that have that have creeped amongst us who are trying to discourage ones, saying, "Oh, don't go to Africa because the people starving and suffering over there." That's see, that's that's a that, that's a response totally without any faith. That that is a, a faithless response. That's a careless response. And if this one or ones want to call themselves Rastafari, it's very clear that that's a false. Rastafari response because it doesn't have anything to do with the teaching of His Imperial Majesty or the testimony of His Christ or the the very words that we have in Metaf Kedus that, that we have in the Scriptures. The landscape is changing. Almost every open space we passed was filled with makeshift shelters, the homes for those fleeing the drought and the threat of widespread famine. Despite only being 400 meters from the front line, thousands are still pouring into this camp. Setting up with the few possessions they've managed to bring with them.
The real depth of this crisis only becomes clear once we reach the clinic. Mothers queue, desperate to get help for their severely malnourished children. When Safia had absolutely no food or water in her village, in the famine hit south, she caught a ride to Mogadishu on the back of a lorry with her five children. Her son Nasir doesn't look it, but he's 12 months old and already in a struggle for survival. Well, despite all the dangers that there are here in Mogadishu, these families are willing to risk it because life has become so dire at home. We're hearing from the doctors that children are dying on the way as they walk for days on end, and some families are reaching here when it's simply too late. Just hanging on is eight-month-old Ahmed Abdi. His father, who was forced to move from camp to camp during the war, without any work, he simply can't get the money to feed his children. They keep coming. In the last nine days, this clinic alone has seen well over a thousand severely malnourished children. The aid workers are struggling to cope. We really need to have enough supplies to uh, provide for these uh, for these people and their children. We need vaccination, we need the, the supplementary food, we need clean water as well, that's really important, and sanitation facilities. Of course, fundamentally, we need food. The hardest part will be getting food deep into the areas held by Al-Qaeda-linked rebels. With war and now a famine spreading, this is one daunting challenge. Will Ross, BBC News, Mogadishu. But the rebellious. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. <laughs>